When we eat food, we all know in order to get the nutrients from it, we must digest it. But how does our body actually do that? The answer is metabolism, and it includes all of the chemical activities in your body. These processes are categorized by catabolism, for those that break down biomolecules, and anabolism, for those that build biomolecules. Now let's get started. The first law of thermodynamics states that energy can be transformed from one form to another, but can be neither created nor destroyed. In this diagram, we can see that light, in most cases the sun, can be turned into glucose with the process of photosynthesis. Animals, like this rabbit, can then use that glucose when they've digested the plant to produce energy, or ATP, using a process called cellular respiration. Remember that breaking bonds requires energy, and making new bonds releases energy in the forms of light and heat. An important factor in metabolism is bond energy. Bonds that are more stable release more energy when they're broken, but they're also harder to break. This potential energy diagram shows the activation energy, the energy required to begin a reaction starting at its free point, where it hasn't started the reaction yet. The transition state is the highest point along the reaction because it's where the most free energy is in comparison to the product is the least stable state. We can see it takes a lot of energy to start this reaction, but once that ball is up the hill, it's super easy on the way down. The second law of thermodynamics can be defined by entropy, the measure of randomness. The increase of entropy or disorder is favored by nature, and it increases whenever there's a change. That's why solid objects have less entropy than liquid or gas, because those other two move around or change more often. There are two types of reactions. Spontaneous reactions will continue on their own once they're underway without the need of continuous inputs of energy. For example, if you light a match, it will continue to burn until it runs out without the continuous fire from the lighter. On the other hand, there's non-spontaneous reactions that need a continuous input of energy to continue to react. For example, if you boil water and either take it off the stove or take off the heat, it won't continue to boil because there's no more input of energy. One big factor in differentiating the two is their total Gibbs free energy at the end of a reaction. It's the energy that isn't lost and still available to work. We can look at it also in the way of two different types of processes. Exergonic processes are spontaneous. They make an increase in entropy. This means they decrease in the free energy, giving them negative total Gibbs free energy because entropy is included in any change of the Gibbs free energy. As you might have guessed, there are also non-spontaneous processes. These are called endergonic processes, and they decrease entropy, but they increase in free energy at the end, giving them positive total Gibbs free energy at the end of the reaction. Now is there a point to all these reactions? If they're so different, how can they be useful together to make up metabolism? I'm glad you asked, because those would be where coupled reactions come in play. The, they happen so that energy required by one process is supplied by another process, this making both parties happy and fulfilled. An example of this is ATP hydrolysis. It is formed when ATP is combined with the phosphate, and the energy released from the hydrolysis of ATP into ADP is used to perform cellular work, usually by coupling the exergonic reactions of ATP hydrolysis with endergonic reactions. So, what have we actually learned about metabolism? Metabolism is the sum of all reactions in an organism, and we've learned about these reactions, which are called endergonic and exergonic. Metabolism usually follows a pattern where one reaction's product becomes another reaction's reactants, and in that product becomes the next reactant, and so on and so forth. A phenomenon called shared intermediate. Metabolism is what keeps me and you alive, so be thankful, and I hope you learned something today. If you'd like to see any more videos, stay tuned, because there might not be any more. But still, I hope you enjoyed!